Maybe I'm just too old to read books about teenagers. Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about this book, Let It Snow, by these three authors, John Green, Maureen Johnson, and Lauren Miracle. I bought this book when I was like probably in middle school when I actually liked it. John Green and loved his books. I still do. I really enjoyed Looking for Alaska, Will Grayson, Will Grayson, um, Abundance of Catherine's, Paper Towns. The only book I didn't like was Fault in, in I think Fault in Our Stars. I, I don't even remember the title. I just, I didn't finish that book. I had this book. I didn't read it because by the time I had this book, I went to high school and during high school, I read literally no fiction unless it was like written by Charles Dickens or something. And when I went to college, that kind of like, I have to read nonfiction thing stuck to me and I read like almost zero fiction unless it's like 1984. I had this book lying around, but it's Christmas season. It's December, so I read it because it's apparently three holiday romances. I don't read romances, especially out of like all the nonfiction, like all the fiction genres. If I had to choose a fiction book, I read usually horror or thriller, so I love Stephen King. And for some reason, romance is just, it's really like cringy to me and really unrealistic. But I guess like all relationships are different. This book is separated into three uh, like mini stories and they're, but they're all like interlocked. And each story is written by each author. So the first story is called, it's called the Jubilee Express. And this one is just kind of mellow. It was like meh for me. Uh, it's about this girl whose name is Jubilee and she has like the biggest problem with her name cause she hates her name. And she has this boyfriend, Noah, who's like this popular class president, like no, like school president type of popular guy who's like kind of obsessed with college, which is like, everybody that was around me. <laughs> During Christmas, she was supposed to spend Christmas with her boyfriend who is really busy with family matters, but her parents end up going to jail for this very minor thing that I don't even want to mention. So she she's sent to like her grandparents who house who are living in Florida. And during the way, there's like the biggest blizzard in 50 years and the train stops in like in the middle of the road. She gets off and she goes to this waffle house, meets this guy called Stuart, and they hit it off really. At first, she's very hesitant because she has a boyfriend and stuff, but her boyfriend is like kind of she he doesn't he doesn't seem to really care for her because at this point because her parents went to jail, there was a blizzard, she he, she got stuck in the train, in the snow, in the storm, and then she went with this stranger to his house because she didn't have anywhere else to go. Her boyfriend should have cared. And I admit that. And Stuart points this out. He's like, Oh, your boyfriend's a dick, but I and he's like I experienced that my ex-girlfriend she was always busy she was a cheerleader and she was always busy and she ended up cheating on me which is like it's heartbreaking and then Jubilee breaks up with her boyfriend Noah through phone because after her conversation with Stuart and then like she kisses Stuart and yeah they end up being together I just spoiled the entire thing it's okay it's not worth the read I guess, unless you want to be like happy, I guess. I just didn't like the Jubilee Express, which is the title of the short story, because I just did not like Stuart. Stuart, he's like depicted as this really nice guy, but anybody, I feel like he drove a wedge between Noah and Jubilee and like set himself there. I felt like this relationship between Noah and Jubilee ended so abruptly. A relationship that ends that abruptly is bound to come up again in the future. Yeah, I just I just did not like how Stuart just stepped in. Like this third person getting into Jubilee's head and telling her that her boyfriend is a dick. And even if her boyfriend was not that great, she could have figured that out by herself or Stuart could have told her that and she could have figured that out by herself and she could have worked it through with Noah, but apparently she didn't like him that much anyways because she just got all with Stuart and I just did not like that part of the book. And then the second book, um is called what is this called a cheers cheer tastic christmas miracle it's by john green so i'm going to be ha i'm going to have to be critical about this part because this is this is this is the author that i bought the whole book for honestly i enjoyed reading this um in the in the story there's three characters tobin i think 
Tobin and a girl named the Duke. It's like her nickname and JP who happens to be a Korean guy. Huh. Although there's like literally nothing Korean about, Korean about him. A friend that a friend of theirs that works at the Waffle House, um he calls and says there's 14 cheerleaders all stuck in the in the Waffle House because their train got stuck. Which is this train that Jubilee was riding in. So like all the stories are kind of interlocked. And they rushed to, to the Waffle House. And the entire story is basically about their journey to the Waffle House. With their car, which is not the greatest. In this very, very stormy weather. And long story short the duke and the main character tobin get together they're like it's like it's like the most typical friend to lover situation where tobin's like huh was she was she always like that um and the duke is like i'm a girl too i cheerleaders what's so special about cheerleaders i'm a girl too and they get together so it was really cheesy but you know i've seen real couples who are like that so I guess all relationships are cheesy. What I did not like about this book, what this part of the book was that the Duke is presented as the like I'm not the typical girl stereotype trope whatever. Tobin depicts Duke like this. Lots of guys like the Duke, but she never seemed interested in anybody. She didn't want to talk your ear off about some guy and how cute he was and how he sometimes paid her attention and sometimes didn't and all that crap. I liked that about her. The Duke was just normal. She liked to joke around and talk about movies and she didn't mind yelling or getting yelled at. She was much more like a person than other girls were. What? I... I love to joke. Who doesn't like to joke and talk about movies? I love to talk about movies and... All my friends like movies and she didn't mind getting yelled at. I yell more than anybody in my friend group and I don't mind getting yelled at either. Every girl is like this so I don't understand. It Does does Tobin, does this guy like he only... Have you only met like three girls? I don't know but I just did not like this trope. So the entire story is of course it's YA so it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of cringy. And it's very typical but it was still like a, a good read that guy the korean guy he is just put in there for laughs almost he's like he's like the third wheel and he does all the jokes he does all the funny parts of this story which is why it was such a light thing to read it was very humorous to read but um i don't know i just wish he ended up with somebody <laughs> i feel bad for him <laughs> The last story is called The Patron Saint of Pigs and it's by Laura Miracle and this is the this is the story that like motivated me to do this video. See how the notes are all at the back? It's because this part was the worst and I wanted to talk about it. It's about this girl named Addie. She cheated on her boyfriend Jeb who appears in like the first and second story. But she feels terrible about it and basically she is broken up with him I think. Yeah, she's broken up with him and she feels she throws like this whole pity party like half of the story is about her pity party and then she realized that she's self-absorbed and she tries to fix it basically in a span of one day like literally this book this story the first day was Christmas the next day is the 26th so for Christmas she was moping and then for the 26th she was like a whole different person so um unrealistic i hated this character so much if she was not a teen she would have issues and i'm glad that by the end of the book she kind of changed at least it uh, even though it was unrealistic i'm glad that she changed because she asks she says this and i think it's just so cringy she says to her boyfriend I want you to follow me onto a plane and serenade me in the first class cabin like Robbie did to Julia in The Wedding Singer, I said. I want you to build a house for me like Noah did for Ali in The Notebook. Which, by the way, that, that story is so bad. I stopped watching the movie when Noah tried to ask Ali out by hanging on that Ferris wheel, which is so... Stop it. Get some help. I want you to fly me across the ocean at the prow of an ocean liner like the guy in Titanic, remember? What is she saying? She she's such so into like grand gestures and I'm so glad that she's a teen because if she's not, she's delusional. If this if that's the things that she's expecting from her boyfriend. There were some points of this book that I kind of like understood, I guess. Like the whole breakup part and how she mopes and like throws a pity party. It's sad. It's depressing. One of the things that I 
did uh, like understand so, something that I deeply understood actually with this couple was that Addie was sad that Jem didn't get anything for, for her for her six month anniversary. And when she got, I think like a playlist. Yeah, she got a playlist of the most romantic songs ever and he gave her nothing. So I understand that she can feel bad about that. And she tells it to him. She says, you didn't get me anything and that made me feel sad. So the next day, Jeb gives her like a necklace, which she recognized as a necklace that was in like um those quarter machines with from a plastic egg and i know that's d disappointing but apparently he used 38 quarters to get that specific necklace with the heart on it and her friend tells her this and her response to this is that's still less than ten dollars which she know knows that it was like a jerk move and she doesn't really mean it but I wish that there has been like more negotiation and communication between these two couple, these two. As a, I guess this is so much like more Korean culture. In Korean culture, we, a lot of couples celebrate the 100th or 200th or 300th. All these, there's a lot of anniversaries that people celebrate. And I think it's a really good thing. But my boyfriend who's American, he didn't really understand how or why. Um, people had to take care of these anniversaries and get gifts particularly um, and I felt kind of upset about that and I think one of the things that really made our relationship stronger was me talking about why I wanted to do that and how we're going to do it um, obviously it's a very very um, it's a very uncomfortable conversation to have with your boyfriend about presents in general because of the fact that it's about money and i think it's so important to kind of agree upon like a price range because it sucks when you give like something that's super expensive and you get something that's like ten dollars in my case this is so i'm digressing but i just want people to know that it's important to communicate but in my case um my boyfriend and i just get something like the same thing but like as a couple item so like we get a sweater in each other's size sizes and we just wear that and we buy it for each other so even though it's like the same price anyways back to this book there's also a point in this book where she shows her friends an email that she sent to her ex-boyfriend and i feel her honestly it's really cringy this email but this is the part that i had a problem with and her friend points it out and this is the part that she kind of changes in the end of the book but she says that she's basically saying oh if you have me back i am yours and that i've changed etc etc but throughout this entire until this part of the book there's nothing about her that's actually good um and she didn't really change and her friend points this out and she tries to change but it takes like only one day and that's like my biggest problem with the story i guess that you have to change in one day to make this story all interlocked because at the very end all the characters that have appeared throughout this entire book like meet together in the starbucks and this main character gets back together with her ex-boyfriend it's all a happy ending it's warm and toasty starbucks one day for a person to change was it was just not realistic another thing i got annoyed was how she broke up with her boyfriend she went he was she cheated on him at a party that they were both in and he didn't know about it until the next day when she went up to him and told him what happened which is good like facing your problems and then the boyfriend he didn't want to break up he's like oh stay and then the girl is like i know i did something really wrong and i should you deserve better and I should go. And she leaves when the boy wants her to stay. And and then she regrets leaving. So I'm like, there's like so little depiction of her emotions. Maybe I'm just like a very like not empathizing person. But I, it was really hard to understand why she was acting, acting the way that she was acting throughout a lot of this book. At the very end of the book, she talks to this old lady and old lady, there's always this old lady that gives wise counseling wisdom. Wise counseling wisdom. She says this, she says, silly girl, it's not what the universe gives us that matters. It's what we give the universe. And then she got, she was like, shock, new me, new like catharsis or whatever, awakening. And, and then she's like, oh yeah, that's so true. And then she just changes as a human being, like, like that. I'm so bad at stopping. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too old to read books about teenagers. 
I yeah maybe I'm I'm just that I'm just too old to read books about teenagers, which I know is funny considering the fact that I'm 20, but. I have not been like a teenager for the past three years because like in Korea, if you're in college, you're not a teenager anymore. Um, and my high school years were very, very different from the ones in these books. And every time I read a book like this, I become like kind of sad and I want to become a high school kid in the US and I know that the things that happen in like high school musical or whatever are not reality. But every time I read books like this and there's like romance and stuff, I kind of want to be like an American high school kid because my high school years were nothing like that. I had to sit down and study my ass off. So that's it for today. Um, thank you so much for seeing my video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Um, don't read this book. I, I don't know if I would ever strongly recommend this book to somebody, but if you're a teenager and you need a little bit of holiday romance, then I would go for it. It's like a short read. It's not that hard to read. And it definitely put your mind off of your concerns. And that's it for today. Please, everybody stay safe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!